Moin, guten Tag, everybody. Guten Abend, I guess. How's it going? It's the Brad Code again, and I'm super excited because no fancy editing today. Not that I know how to fancy edit, but today we are making some delicious overnight sourdough. <laughs> Hello, where's everybody in the world? Uh, I'm from Hamburg, Germany. So we Germans are very serious about our bread game. I would say the national food of our country, it's probably bread, beer, and maybe schnitzel. Uh, <laughs> so I will also be reading the questions. I'm just trying to keep up to everything. And um, yeah, let's get our hands dirty. Let's start working that dough. And because we are in Germany, it's also very important that we enjoy a nice piece of other fermentation handcraft. So I will just be enjoying my Flensburger on the way. Oh, that's the sound it should make. <laughs> mm. So, Moin Caro, Moin Jose, Moin Chase, CRT32, hello, Giovanni, hi, C. Fazio, hi to Chicago, Marina, nice to meet you, good evening from Moscow, and I can't pronounce your name, it must be some Cyrillic uh, something, by the way, I learned that the Bulgarians developed the Cyrillic, Cyrillic, difficult German, the Cyrillic alphabet, I guess, <laughs> Richard, Florida, Caro Beer, North Mantis, Moin from Bay Area, Graham, UK, Anna Lucas from Uruguay. Wow. I heard the Uruguayans have the best uh, beef on the world. And I'm just going to switch the camera now. Ah, my streaming setup. So I already made this dough. Let me just try to turn this around. Whoops. I hope. You can see everything. You can see my nice, my nice buffalo socks here. Mm, very random. What does the buffalo dad say when he drops off his son at school? Bye, son. <laughs> Did you get it? Bye, son. Okay, I'm out of here. I just need to fix my camera. <sighs> Engineering. <laughs> Hope you can see this. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so many viewers already. 53 viewers. Thanks for all the thumbs up, too. So, this is the dough, and this is going to be our overnight dough. And, um, yes, for an overnight dough, one thing I guess that you should uh, consider is that unless you're a crazy person and you get up very early, you have a longer fermentation period. So things will take a little longer. And um, that's why we need to use less sourdough starter for it. Because normally, at least for me, in my case, I'm using around 20% of my sourdough starter. That's what I typically use. But then my dough, in my case, it would be ready in around five to six hours, I guess. And um, well, five to six hours, I'm not that German, so I don't get up that early. I get up early at 10 a.m. maybe. <laughs> uh, it reminds me of university times when I always had issues with um, my, my classes because they were at 4.15 p.m. and I would always just all get up at 4 p.m. or so. But not that bad, but yeah, so I don't want to get up super early. And um, that's why we will just be... Uh, reducing the amount of sourdough starter that we're using. That way we are slowing things, things down. Things? That way we are slowing things down pretty much. Yeah. To all of you who have seen some of my videos before, what I like to do is I like to extract a small fermentation sample. Note, not probe because I said probe before and somebody of you corrected me, it should be sample, not probe. Probe is very German, probe. So thank you for that. I'm still learning. <laughs> Anyways, I like to extract a small sample. And um, this is my sample, actually a dough which I made this morning. 
And using this sample, I can monitor whether my dough doubled in size or not. Of course, you want to have a container like this. It should be cylindric shape or else the volume increase might actually not be linear, but might be something different. So I like to take a small sample like this, and this really makes it easy to judge when my bulk fermentation has completed. So this is a really great hack. Um, you're not going to over ferment. It, because if you fer fer ferment for too long, then chances are your dough gets a little bit uh, too sour, and then your dough just turns out flat in the oven. So if that happened to you, then this could be a great way to make sure that you both ferment on time. All right, so that's what we are also going to do. We are going to be extracting this sample here. And that way in the morning, I can check this, this double in size, yes or not, then it's ready. If it did not, then I just wait a little bit longer. All right, this is the first time I'm baking with this kind of flour. And to double check the flour, you always want to do uh, what is called a window pane test. And let me show you. For this, um, make sure that your hands are wet. In this case, this is around 500 grams of flour. It's not a whole wheat dough, but it's very close to a whole wheat dough. It's a little bit of the bran removed pretty much. And I already mixed that around four hours ago. So this has been sitting like this. And what happened is the water activated the whole flour. So uh, the enzymatic reactions are happening right now. This means that our flour is gonna be more easy to digest for the yeast and the bacteria. And this is a great way also to get a little bit of a more open crop. <laughs> Oh, I saw Richard Walker. Yes, <laughs> you're most welcome. This is a really great way to just double check how things are going. So yeah, this auto lease, this process is called the auto lease. No sourdough butter added, no salt added. And um, you can do this uh, for eight hours, sometimes even 10 hours. I just like to make sure that my dough doesn't stay at room temperature for longer than 24 hours in total. So including bulk fermentation, including proofing. Everything below that is great. And yeah, flour breaks down pretty much the same thing that happens when you seed your grain. So let's check the oil leaves now. Um, this was 500 grams of flour, 400 grams of water, around 80% hydration. And let's check the window pane uh, test. This is a great way just to see whether your gluten has developed a little bit. And have a look at this. Looking very good. The dough holds together. Um, great gluten development already. This is the gluten holding it together. I'm just gonna stretch it even a little more until this tears, just to get a feeling for this dough. Yes, now it starts to tear. But iron down, this looks good. So the amount of water added to this, perfect. Now, if your dough is still sticky, I mean, have a look. This is how sticky the dough is. I wetted my hands and you see it doesn't stick. If your dough is overly sticky, chances are you might have used too much water. So this dough is good, but we're still missing the salt. Das Salz. Teaching you some German. By the way, I learned today that apparently Germans start counting with their thumbs. How about you? How do you start counting? Do you start counting with your thumb or with this index finger? <laughs> so we Germans count one, two, three, four, five. But I heard Northern Americans start counting like one, two, three. See, I'm having issues here. <laughs> Four. Reminds me a little bit of the hand from a scary movie. You remember the scene? <laughs> and five. <laughs> like this? Seriously? <laughs> um, so, 80% hydration. Yes. Uh, Jean-Philippe, hi from Brittany. Nice to meet you. Uh, Skirker, hi to Tennessee. I love Britannia. I was making this nice camembert bread recently with a nice uh, camembert from Britannia. Very, very delicious. <laughs> <laughs> wow, see, we got that sorted. So some people with the index finger, others with a thumb. <laughs> oh, Cisco, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm trying to answer all the comments, but sometimes it's just too many. <laughs> but I'm really doing my best. I want to make everybody a great baker around the world. Okay, so back to this dough. I'm sorry for getting sidetracked. Did I just get sidetracked? <laughs> I'm using my scale, and this is actually a cheap scale, nothing fancy. 
and I'm going to be adding the salt and I'm going to be adding the starter right now. And let me just show you something real quick here on my computer in a new tab. Um, I actually developed this one table, table.zebretcode.io. Uh, I'm just going to show you. Hello, hello, hello. I hope you can see this. So pretty much this is a table. I'm sorry for this table thing. This is a table that shows you based on your starter percentage for how much in the temperature, for how much you should ferment roughly, uh, approximately. Please take this with a grain of salt because we will be looking at our dose sample. But in this case, this is probably the temperature right now. And 5% should give me um, around seven hours bulk fermentation. So uh, that uh, actually, I think I should measure probably what's the current temperature. But yeah, I think I'm gonna be going for 5% actually. So I'm gonna be going for 5% starter. So 5% sourdough starter based on the flour mass. And then things are hopefully ready tomorrow morning because right now it's, uh, it's uh, 8 p.m. right here. And so yeah, I'll be opting for the 5% sourdough uh, version. And I'll be monitoring my sample and yeah, then we'll see. I hope you were able to see this actually. <laughs> Okay, putting this camera back here. <laughs> God, this perspective is really strange. <laughs> I might have seen this perspective before, but part of another topic. So, <laughs> yes, so 5% sardo stutter. Calro, you're right, 5% sardo stutter. Um, Adam asked for yeast. I always like to make Poolish, and the Poolish, I guess the Poolish has 0.1% yeast, so only very, very, very little yeast. I actually made a video on pizza some time ago, and there I was using 500 milligrams or something for a kilogram of flour. But first, the salt. So I like to use 2% based on the flour in terms of salt. So that will be 10 grams, and then we go for the sourdough starter. And now some people have recommended, yes, you should spread out, spread out the salt a little bit more, but I don't think this is actually doing a major difference. But this should be okay, like this. And now the sourdough starter, we will be using 5%. So probably much less than you typically use. But in case this sourdough starter is a whole wheat starter, I just always feed my sourdough starter whole wheat Plus, um, this is close to a whole wheat flour, so this thing here should be trained to ferment this. So um, using less starter is actually a good idea because this will be very, very fast at fermenting. So 5% based on 500, oh man, uh, 50 grams, 25, 25. So I could ask Alexa, but apparently I was shopping some stuff for some people when I used Alexa in one of my last videos. So I'm not going to do that now. So 25. <laughs> and have a look. This is all the sourdough starter we are using. Actually, a good thing that I recommend you to try is just taste your sourdough. Mm -hmm. From time to time to just get a feeling for the acidity. Probiotic food. <laughs> So this is all the starter that we need for this overnight bread. Um, five percent. So yeah, this is just twenty-five grams of sourdough starter. So not a lot. I like to spread this starter a little bit here, but there's not really a technique. And then I do a little bit of stretching and folding just to incorporate the starter. So I just go here, lift this fold this over and I will keep doing this for around three minutes and while I'm doing this I'm just going to try to answer your questions I'm normally a very stupid person so I have no I'm not able to focus on two things at the same time so I apologize for this already in advance but I will try my best to answer your questions now in case you have some do you have some questions for this random German <laughs> 
Yes. What about 20% core transformation? Yes, we could be using 20%, but then the fermentation process would be way faster. And since this is an overnight bread where I will do nothing overnight, um, it's not safe to use 20%. We would over ferment our bread, which is also not necessarily a bad thing. You could be using a loaf pan in the end to bake your bread, but if we want to get a little bit of an open crumb, and nice oven spring, then over fermentation is not a good idea. And you can see already how the starter is being incorporated just by doing a few stretch and folds with my hands. With my hands. Graham Goter, changing the percent of starter to control the fermentation. Brilliant idea. <laughs> uh, and can you also use the fridge? That was your question. Excellent question, Graham. Yes. You could also be using the fridge. However, in the fridge at below six degrees Celsius, I have no idea how much of this is in Fahrenheit. Uh, sorry, Americans. Uh, things are pretty much coming to a halt. So you have to change the temperature in your fridge. At six degrees Celsius, things are still progressing a little bit, but below that, it's pretty much completely at a halt. That's why you can also store your sourdough starter for probably a few months in your fridge without any problems. And note how sticky this dough still is right now. It's still relatively sticky, but it's gonna become less sticky and sticky the more we add strength. We wanna add strength and we wanna add a little more strength because we will not be doing any stretch and folds overnight. That's why it's so important for an overnight dough to add more strength. More strength. Teigstärke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gregory, yes, I saw this video before. Uh, so Food Geek made an excellent video on the stall, the salt uh, when adding salt before to the autolys. He tested this excellent video. Recommend you to check this out. And I also saw this video. Uh, yes and no, I would say. So especially when you do a very long autolys. Let's say you do 30 minutes at least. I agree. I would add my salt right away. But in this case, I have been doing a four hour at least, then I would opt to add my salt a little bit later. Just because I want the natural reactions to happen without any salt intervening. I uh, hope this made sense. <laughs> um, slap and fold. So Adam Brown asks, can you do slap and fold after at least? Um, uh, can you do slab and fold after uh, auto lease? Uh, that's what we're doing right now, right? We're doing stretch and fold. We're not doing slab and fold. I know there are some people who like to take the dough and then just, you know, toss it on the counter like this. But to me, this is very brutal. Do you want to be, always ask yourself, do you want to be slapped like this on the counter? <laughs> or do you want to be gently folded like this? So what do you prefer? That's the treatment you should be offering your dough. <laughs> Judy Vallis says, I renamed Alexa to Echo, so prop captors couldn't trip me up. <laughs> what an excellent idea. <laughs> love hangover. I don't love a hangover. And you're saying great videos. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Richard Walker asked, would adjusting the sourdough starter re result in a softer bread? Um, nope, it wouldn't. It just slows down the fermentation or speeds up the fermentation time. Uh, in general, I would say try not to go above 20% sourdough starter because else you add a lot of this acid, a lot of lactic acid right away to your, to your dough. And that's not something you want because that way your gluten structure is going to break much faster. And then we won't get that nice open crumb. I don't know how many minutes it has been, but this dough is pretty much ready so far. I'm just going to let this sit for 15, one, five, a quarter. I know I have my issues with 15, so 15, one, five minutes. <laughs> um, Awesome. Kao asked, protein kind of my flour. That's around 15, 15.15%. <laughs> uh, 
Ah, uh, Harley, how's it going, Harley? Help all is good. You should check out some of the breads that Harley is baking. He's a serious pro baker. We should be doing a baking session together sometime. <laughs> um, so this is actually um, not a whole wheat flour, but I bought it pre-processed where they removed some of that bread. It's an Italian flour. It's a Tipo 2 flour, and I never baked with it. And I actually still have the packaging here in case you're interested. So this is the packaging. It has around 15 grams of protein, 5% of fiber, and yeah, so this is the flour. And I never bake with it first time that I'm baking with this flour. I think in Germany it would be close to type 1050 or so. <laughs> George Vieira, how do I know when my dough has completed bulk? I will be showing you that in a little bit. We will be using a small sample, not probe, not probe, sample. German, you see, I'm learning some English. <laughs> Even I can learn the English. Mm. The ratio to feed my sourdough. I, I pretty much always go for one to five to five, five these days. There's a rare exception that I don't do this. But typically, it's always one, two, five, two, five. While we are waiting, I will just quickly close the dough so that this does not dry out. And I'm just also going to clean this stuff here up a little bit. Maybe that's just my German OCD. And just so that you see, right now the temperature, let's check the temperature. It's around much hotter than I. Expect it, 25 degrees Celsius. Harley, <laughs> mm. <laughs> you're most welcome. Ivan Kozwe asked, when is the best time to laminate? By the way, you're awesome. So about the awesome part, I don't know, but about the lamination, I do this when I have a relatively wet dough. In this case, this dough has around 80% hydration, so this would be a good candidate to do some lamination. Why is there this, why is there this random stuff here? So sorry. <laughs> Such a mess. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, Payoshini, what do you think about all these after adding salt and stutter? That's pretty much what we're doing right now, but this wouldn't be technically called an all these um, because I can actually turn this camera right now like this. Oh, no. Wait a sec. So while we're waiting, we're just going to be waiting one, five uh, minutes, and then we will proceed. So I'm just going to turn this like this. Can you see me? I guess. Yes. OK, so Payoshini, what do you think about autolase after adding salt and starter? It's not technically an autolase then, because there is already uh, starter inside, and your dough started to ferment. But it's a great way when your dough is sticky. Just wait a few minutes, and then go back to your dough. That's going to make your dough easier to handle. That's actually exactly what we're doing. We're waiting 15 minutes, and then we will go back to our dough and just keep working it. And I like to do that between all the steps. So I mix in my starter, mix in the salt, wait 15 minutes, um, do a little bit of bench kneading, wait 15 minutes, and then optionally do the lamination if I feel that this dough uh, requires more dough strength. Hope this, may, hope this answered the question. <laughs> Uh, how long does your starter ferment before using it? Caro. So Caro asked, how long does my starter ferment before using it? Uh, it's always, so that's something you have to figure out for your starter. I like to use my starter the moment I see that this year pretty much doubled in size. So um, I always mark a, take a rubber band. And when I see this doubled in size, um, that's when I proceed to add this to my main dough. And actually, at the same time, when feeding my starter, I already prepare my main dough. I already set up the autolase. I found that to be a great process. So while feeding my starter one to five to five, I also already start the autolase. Hope this made sense. <laughs> uh, Barefold, Zumstock asked, should I be going for a one to five to five ratio because my sourdough isn't so old yet? Yes, you should definitely do that. Just always go for a one to five to five ratio. Actually, in fact, you're gonna pile up a lot of this card starter, but I have a video coming up on this very soon where I'm showing you a nice way to make crackers. 
And <laughs> actually, I thought about naming the video Discard Starter Crackers, but then I thought, okay, actually, it's not Discard because this is a long fermented, slow fermented flour. So from a health perspective, it's probably healthier than the not too fermented flour. You have to imagine a wine. This is the starter that you're piling up in a jar in your fridge. That's precious starter that has been fermented for a long time. It's pretty much not flour anymore. It's just bacteria, yeast, and whatever they made out of the flour. So I'm going to be naming the video <laughs> Slow Fermented Sourdough Crackers because I feel that's a better, better name. So don't think of it as discard starter. Think of it as something precious something that has fermented over a longer period of time. <laughs> Roy Leroy Rerugsen, pronounced 15, more like 15er, then gradually reduce the er a bit at the end. Okay, 15er, 15, 15, 15. Okay, I tried my best. <laughs> Oh, Jose Lausch, how to get big blisters on the crust? Excellent question. I actually also wanted to do a video on this. To get big blisters on the crust, it's very important that you, first of all, have a highly hydrated dough, so anything more than 75%. You want to make sure that you brush off all the flour before you bake. And... Uh, you also want to make sure that you retard your, uh, your dough in the fridge. So try to do a 24-hour retard after shaping it inside of the fridge. That should do wonders. And while baking, you have to make sure that you use a lot of steam. For that, I really recommend you to opt for the Dutch oven option because it's just so great. Then try giving a little bit of extra spritz using something like this here uh, before the bake so that way you have additional water inside so cold temperatures high hydrated dough and that should be the and no flour on top that should be the trick to get you those nice looking blisters and i love them they just add this incredible layer of uh, crispiness so if you have some tips uh, jose please i know you are also an awesome baker uh, feel free to share them with me because I might be uncovering them in my next video, just like, like I did when you showed me that freezer hack. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Cisco, oh, thank you. Uh, so Cisco saying three things you like here. Great recipes, great technique tips, and great sense of humor. So I would agree maybe on the first two points, but humor, humor is something we Germans don't have. <laughs> <laughs> um, true clue for oven spraying. Do you just recommend pre-spraying it with water or adding ice cubes in the Dutch oven? I've never tried adding the, the ice cubes to the Dutch oven. I don't see I don't see the point for doing it. Maybe somebody knows better than me, but I don't see the point. Especially if your Dutch oven closes very well. I like to bake upside down just to make sure I have even more gravity on the seal of the Dutch oven. Then I spray with steam and all the steam will stay inside. It's not going to go out. Make sure also to not activate the fan in your oven. And I don't see the reason for using the ice cubes. Maybe there's a reason that I don't know, but at least for me, for my setup, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Max Solino, I have a sourdough starter emergency. I need your help. OK, shoot your question. And maybe the others can also read to what Max is saying, because I have to go back working on this dough now. And shoot your question, Max. I'm sure somebody's going to be able to help you there. I just want to quickly clean my hands. I'm back, everybody. And let's go back and have a look at our dough, but first enjoy a little bit more of hydration. So I'm just going to turn this down. 
And Jose, you asked one more question. You asked on the Challenger bread pan. So if you guys don't know the Challenger bread pan, that's a nice Dutch oven that works excellent for making the tarts. Um, there is no difference. Seriously, it's just more out of a comfort thing, I would say. Uh, they close the same way as the large ones do. So in terms of that, I, I wouldn't say it's better. But if you want to make the tarts, then it really has a nice, excellent shape. <laughs> Hope this answered your question. And my default Dutch oven is actually a large one. I think it was 60, 60 euro or so, one six. This is our dough now. And we can do the window pane test one more time and you see good gluten development. Nice. Now, if your dough at this stage is too sticky or it tears, chances are you use too much water or your sourdough is already too acidic. Then just add more flour add a little bit more salt, then you're good to go. Take note next time for your flour combination, you want to be using a little bit less. <laughs> All right. So I would just, I like to gently go below the dough. I wet my hands again, so just that I can take out the dough. This makes it so much easier. And when I feel that the dough is not stuck that much anymore, I just go out with my hand like this, and I take out the dough and place it on my kitchen counter. Now you could be using fancy tools such as a dough scraper, but I always advocate for using as few tools as possible. And that's why I will be showing you everything just with my hands, something you can do at home. So no tools, just my hands. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> so... This is the dough, and now we will be doing a little bit of bench kneading. And for this, what I like to do is I just like to take the dough, it's rather sticky, I fold it out, I stretch it out, and I take it and I fold it over like this. And just note how well the dough stays together. And you see it tries to spring back here, but by just putting it down here, it's just magically sticks together. That's a good looking dough. <laughs> and you always have to give your dough a little bit of a slap just to show you though who is the boss. <laughs> and we do the same thing again, just from the other side. We fold it over, pretty much like this. And now this is very efficient kneading. <laughs> I'm lazy, you know, I'm very lazy. And you see how much the dough already sticks together? All that strength with just so few movements. My hands start to stick a little bit, so I'm just going to be watering them. A little more. Sticky hands need water. <laughs> Harley asked, what am I drinking? Dunkles Weizenbier. Oh, it's actually a beer from northern Germany, Flensburger, close to my place. It's delicious. It's called Flensburger Helles, uh, bright, which is a nice beer, not too hoppy, not too, too much uh, barley. Very, very good. All right, so you see how this dough is coming together just with a few sets of bench kneading. And look at, at how nice, round, and smooth this dough is. And we didn't do any, we didn't do any slapping. We've just been so nice to this dough. And this dough is now rewarding us with being very strong. Hello, my dough. Thank you. You're doing a very good job. I seriously appreciate everything you do for me. Thank you, my doll. Can we please make babies? <laughs> what I just did is very important. Give it a shot yourself. Um, make sure the neighbors are watching while you do this. It's gonna be it's gonna be the difference. So, and you see, the dough already. It's hard to stretch out the dough now because it already has so much strength. So there's not that much more that we can do. And it's just looking so good. I will do this one more time from this side. Ah, and you see, I can't, now I'm just gonna start tearing it. This dough doesn't like that. And now I will leave the dough like this, and then we will do another quick set of lamination. But first off, this is something that I see many people do, doing wrong. 
round up your dough. You can see here that it's still relatively sticky. It's not nice and round. You want to have a nice and round dough all the time. And for this, I would normally use a dough scraper, but now I'm just using my hands. I'm wetting my hands a little bit again. And I'm just going in here at a 45 degree angle. I push till here, making sure that my th my my small finger, what is that? Is that the pinky? 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 I don't know. <laughs> Goes here. And then I'm taking my two hands and I'm pulling the dough over the surface. And we are using the tension of the surface to round up the dough. And look at how magically this dough is becoming nice and round. Good dough. Mm, so satisfying to work with this dough. <laughs> uh, oh, isn't this <laughs> only a sourdough baker could find this so satisfying? <laughs> now, very important give your dough a good slap. <laughs> See, I'm, today I'm teaching you all the important tricks, all the tricks that actually matter. <laughs> Okay, let's check the temperature. Mm, 25 degrees Celsius. I'm glad it's warm. <laughs> now, what I'm just doing is I'm pretty much waiting for the gluten to relax a little bit because we build a lot of tension. And then I will do another set of lamination. And then this dough is going to start fermenting over the night. We will be extracting the sample in a little bit. I will show you how that is done in just a few minutes. I typically like to do that after I did the lamination. The last set of strength adding, that's when I remove the sample. <laughs> Jose says, slap that dough harder. OK, let's try how hard we can slap it. But we have to make sure that our hands are wetted. Oh, I actually have some dough now. Now you, can be, now you can do this with your dough, because we did not inflate it that much. But at some point, you don't want to do that. You want to be as gentle as possible. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I'm waiting until the gluten relaxes, and then I can do the lamination, which is pretty much taking the dough, laying it out very flat, and then we fold it over. Um, this is a great way to add strength, especially when you have a wet dough like this. And note how this dough is spreading out a little bit at snail speed, or maybe even a little bit faster than snail speed. I can't, uh, yeah, hmm. interesting. Yeah, so it's spreading out, and that's completely normal. What I see some people doing is when they round up the dough, I'm not going to do it now, the surface here tears. It's OK. Just wait another 10 minutes, and then go back to your dough. It's going to be so much better. But once the surface tears, it's going to get sticky and sticky and sticky. And that's because here, this surface now is under tension. And now this surface here has less of a surface area when you touch it. If your surface area is all wrinkly, then uh, yeah, it's going to be hard because you will touch more surface area pretty much. And now let me show you what we can do is I'm just going to show you one thing which I like to do is I'm going to, you know, just for science, I will just make this dough tear. And I will show you how easily we can round it up again. So imagine you have a dough like this, you know, with some pieces here and there. And look at this dough. <laughs> what a disaster. <laughs> ah, ah. This is how I sometimes see people having a dough. <laughs> but I'm going to show you how we turn that into a nice looking round ball one more time. <laughs> All right, so same technique again. <laughs> this must hurt, hurt probably seeing this. It hurt a lot doing this, but I just wanted to show you. So this is the mass of dough that we right now have. And I'm just going to be same thing again with my hands. I will round this up. Now, this is when a dough scraper is handy because then we'll have less batches, less stuff, less, less, less flour left on the surface. 
And now, again, I'm just using the tension here of the surface to round up the dough. <laughs> no tools, just technique. That's why I recommend you to also make some pizza and some buns from time to time, because there you can practice this on many pieces of dough. <laughs> 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 and look at this. Did you see how bad it looked and how well it looks now? <laughs> just with a few movements of your hands, the dough just came together so very, very well. That's just something I wanted to visualize. This is how your dough should look like uh, before you start your bulk fermentation, pretty much. All right, but now because I created so much strength, I'm just going to clean my hands. Uh, dirty hands, sticky hands will just make things worse, make things worst <laughs> to you Germans. Worst, German word for sausage. We Germans love the sausages. We have a saying, jetzt geht es um die Wurst. Now it goes around the sausage, literally translated. It means now things become very, 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 very important. <laughs> All right, so cleaning my hands. Hands have been cleaned. The hands have been cleaned. <laughs> All right, let me have a look at the questions while I just give this dough a nice massage. This helps. Yes, worst case scenario, worst case scenario. Nancy Coombs asks, I thought tearing the dough hurts the gluten. Yes, oh no, there's a hair. Oh, disgusting. Tears the gluten, yes it does, but I mean, we developed the gluten everywhere, right? So in the inside, there's still some gluten. Yes, I damaged it a little bit, but we'll make up for that with the lamination. <laughs> so this massage here, very important. This might be the best way to get a more open crumb and more open spring. People who are just joining are probably thinking, what the heck is going on here? Yes, I'm just giving this dough a nice massage. Um, for this massage, typically around the spine region right here, this is <laughs> the dough <laughs> likes to massage the most. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just being stupid. I'm having way too much fun with this dough. <laughs> <laughs> My dough spreads all around. Don't take the ball of shape. Yes, um, maybe too much, too much <laughs> water. <laughs> so, uh, pee pee boo. Maybe that's too much water for your dough. Maybe just try using a little bit less, or try adding more strength to your dough. That's definitely going to to help. Uh, yes, thank you, Kao. 80% hydration. And Jose, yes. Um, you know what? On Instagram, the next time you should post a picture and link this video and say, this is what you did. This is what you did to get the open crumb. This is the, <laughs> this is the uh, reason why your crumb is open, because I followed this random German dome <laughs> massage technique. <laughs> we can make this popular on the internet. <laughs> okay, anyways, I was just doing this to spread out the dough a little bit. <laughs> so it actually had a purpose. <laughs> and now we will be doing some lamination, which is pretty much just laying out the dough very flat, and then we will fold it over. <laughs> and yes, everybody who's just, um, who just joined, please always drop a comment on my videos. I'll I mean, read all the comments. It's just sometimes I don't manage to respond right away, but I'll do my best to respond to all of them. Now, I would, of course, also appreciate if you had a look at some of the comments and gave the other bakers some clues 
um, because that definitely definitely helps all the time. But yeah, I'm doing my best to answer all of them. <laughs> hey, Heidi from Hey Yeti. I'm sorry for pronouncing your username wrong. Hi to Manila. How's it going on the Philippines? You see how I'm just. Uh, making the dough spread a little bit like this. And this is going to give me a big surface area, which will be excellent for the lamination step. So, perfect looking dough. <laughs> Hi, Elikin, how's it going? Nice to see you around too. <laughs> Mita Dioko, you love the worst case scenario. <laughs> worst case, but worst case is uh, sausage and cheese. So <laughs> actually, that's good. Worst case scenario doesn't sound like worst case. It's really something enjoyable. Anyways, I will now take this dough and I will gently fold it over. Now, some people are so experts that I can fold over everything at once, but I don't possess this technique. So I do it step by step, very, 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 very slowly. I have time. Oh, here it tore a little bit, but that's really no problem at all. Same thing, same thing from the other side. Fold it into the middle. We are pretty much just gluing the dough together. That's what we're doing. Now I will take this here and fold this into the middle. I like to do a four, four way style folds like you would do on croissants. And again, I'm not using any helpers. I'm just using my hands so that this is something you can follow at home. Now this here goes over. And this is pretty much our laminated dough. I just like to fold it one more time like this. Then I take this side, glue it over here. Oops. And this is our laminated dough. It's not nice and round, but I will just round it up real quick, just the way we did before. And this dough just already has so much strength. Look at that, 80% hydration, staying together on like a 65% hydration dough. Perfect. Now I might have had a beer too much, but um, I forgot one important thing and that's extracting the sample. <laughs> oh, Harley says, yes, find everybody to not have flour to the table. Yes, all that we just did only works because we did not add any flour. We have to use the tension, the dough has to stick and that way we can rotate it over the counter. This only works because there's no flour. So resist the urge to use flour, please. I'm now going to extract the sample, which I showed before, this is from another dough. And um, this sample here indicates to me when the bulk fermentation is complete. And since this is an overnight dough, everybody who just joined. I will wait until my new sample that I extract doubled in size. I guess tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., I have no idea. Uh, but this sample is going to tell me exactly when it's ready. So don't worry about the timings, just look at your sample. Look at your sample. So just using a sharp knife, you can also be a dough scraper. Okay, I need, definitely need to sharpen this knife again afterwards. I take a small jar like this and I just place my dough inside. I actually need to use a little more dough, I guess. Ah, no. Okay, for this, <laughs> a dough scraper would have been excellent. And I just, just use as much dough as it's needed to cover this jar, the bottom of the jar at least. So just like this, then I will place my rubber band around and then I can observe. Yeah, you have to make sure that you stretch this out a little bit more, but now my hands are so sticky, so that it's very hard. I will do this after the video. 
then it will place the rubber band around. And I will know when this double incised, then it's ready to be shaped. And that's pretty much it. This is just such a great hack that makes it so simple to know when the bulk fermentation is complete. Now, if you still have issues with too sticky dough after the bulk fermentation, Food Geek did a video on this recently. Maybe try stopping bulk fermentation at 75% size increase. Uh, that should also help you. I guess it also depends a little bit on the flour that you're using, but if you want to be safe, go for 75% nice crumb. But if you really want to max it out, if you want to get that maximum open crumb, then try the doubling, the 100% size increase. Now we still have to round this dough up just like we did the last time. Oops. And so this is our dough. And this is going to go back to my pot. Uh, right in here. I will place this dough in here. And now it's going to ferment overnight. I will be going to bed in roughly, I'd say one or two hours. And then I will be doing another coil full before I go to bed. But that's pretty much it. And then we will continue in the morning. Make sure to cover your sample. Um, it shouldn't uh, dry, dry out like this. Keep them close to each other so that you have the same temperature. <laughs> I'm just going to clean my hands real quick, and then I will be right back. In Hamburg, we like to say Moin Digger, and uh, David is a colleague of mine, so uh, Moin Digger. <laughs> Hope all is good in the Düsseldorfs. Um, Harley Baldwin, granite looks cool, but it is very sensitive to ambient temperature. I noticed this myself, especially when making pastry dough, croissants for instance. Um, I had some issues with the ambient temperature, things were just too warm the granite would transfer heat too fast to my pastry dough. It became a little bit hotter, I gotta say. <laughs> uh, Anna Rentera, which would be the maximum level of hydration we could try when using the all-purpose flour? I seriously wouldn't go for more than 65% hydration on all-purpose flour. Max out the bulk fermentation, max out the proofing, and then you're gonna have an amazing uh, bread. Um, 65 percent hydration is something that I use for my everyday bread all the time and works. It's easy and it's delicious. David, jetzt wirst du zum waschechten Influencer. Maybe I have influencer. <laughs> Carlo, in the morning at non-German wake-up times. Yes, we Germans like to wake up relatively early. Typically, maybe I'm not a German. Maybe I'm coming from the mainland. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Cami Car 700. Hey, how's it going? Hope all is good. Thanks for all the pictures you sent me. Uh, took nine hours to double. Wow, that's really a lot of time. Is your sourdough really this active? Maybe try keeping your sourdough for a few more days at room temperature, feed it regularly. It should definitely bump up the activity of your sourdough. That's actually one thing. The fermentation is the basis for everything. I showed you some technique, but you really have to control this fermentation process. That's going to make you an amazing bread. That's so important to control the fermentation process. So yes, keep your sourdough at room temperature, apply daily feedings, one to five to five. And that's definitely going to ramp up your sourdough activity and gonna, that's will make you better bread for sure. Hope this uh, helps a little bit. And please do let me know if this worked out. Jamie Mahaffey, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. I'm sorry if I did not. <laughs> uh, you ask, would it be easier to move it to a flat dish for cold folding like you have in your other videos? Yes, it would definitely be, be simpler, 
but I didn't wash the dish yet, so nothing I can do about it. <laughs> Would probably be the better option. But in this case, yeah, I don't have the dish available. So yeah, that's what I have to do. I have to improvise. And either it's going to turn out or it's going to turn into an epic fail. I'll regardless post the picture tomorrow of the final bread. <laughs> or tomorrow or maybe the day after. It depends a little bit. So <clears throat> I'll choose, do I want it that same day or do I want it to uh, ferment in the fridge? Um, Depends a little bit on when I want the bread to be ready. If I want to have it the same day, I'll do the finger poke test at room temperature. If I want to have it the next day, then I'll be going for the fridge full time. Chemicar, temperature was 21.5 C. Okay, that's relatively cool, but it shouldn't take that long normally. Maybe at a one to five to five feeding ratio, it could. Uh, my starter typically doubles in size right now, five hours, five hours, I guess, with a one to five to five feeding ratio at 25 degrees Celsius. <laughs> the gloom cookie, don't try an 80% hydration on a 10 gram protein flour. Yes, that's, well, you can, you can do that, but then just go for a loaf pan. So uh, you don't always have to make it, but tart, you don't have to make a nice bowl. There's no shame in just using your loaf pan. Make a one-to-one -one flour and water dough. Let that bulk ferment for how long you normally would do. And then just put that into an oil loaf pan. Let that prove for how long you normally would do or 24 hours in the fridge and then bake that. And you will have an amazing sandwich bread. <clears throat> it's gonna be crispy on the outside and so fluffy on the inside. It's so easy to do. I love to do this with rye, and it's gonna give you amazing bread with max five minutes of work. No need to do any fancy kneading, nothing. So if you wanna have simple bread, that's amazing. No shame in just going for a one-to-one -one ratio and uh, baking that using a loaf pan. <laughs> Kenny Card, you have 15% protein flour and 8% hydration. Ah maybe try going for 75%. Just try to max out that fermentation, max out that fermentation, and when you see you did it, then go for a little bit more. I would go for 75% probably because you also add your sourdough starter, so it's gonna be in the end like 77%, I guess, and then it's gonna be easier to handle. <laughs> Marco Bolza, if your wooden surface is not too smooth, you will have the benefit of some more yeast from the earlier dose. Yes. Super valid point, actually. <laughs> That's actually a very, very valid point, yes. <laughs> I didn't think about it this way. Uh, Chemicar, one to five to five ratio. Go for a one to five to five ratio. <laughs> so yeah, we are already close to an hour, so I'm gonna be closing this now. Um, if I did not answer your questions, please drop a comment on one of the videos. I'll make sure to answer as soon as I can. This dough here is now going to rest overnight. I will closely monitor my sample. And in the morning, I will proceed with my regular shaping. There's not gonna be any call folds for at least eight hours. And that's why it's important to add so much strength in advance. But I also never work with this flower. It could be that it turns out as a complete fail because of the side hydration and overnight. <clears throat> but let's see, I will be posting a picture <laughs> regardless. Um, just wanted to show you the technique. And so I hope you learned <clears throat> something about the technique. It might not be the best flour for this experiment, but this is something you can definitely do with your all-purpose flour or other bread flour. Yeah, never tried this on a whole wheat, pretty much whole wheat. It's not full whole wheat, but very close to whole wheat flour. <laughs> Yes, uh, yeah, so I guess that's it. Um, thank you so much, everybody. You are amazing. And I just wanted to do this one quick announcement while you're watching. So next week, I will be going to Naples, Italy, and I will be joining uh, Pizza Yolo, and he's going to teach me some awesome tricks on making pizza. I'm, of course, going to share my failures, me looking like a complete idiot in the professional context, but this has been a dream come true. I always wanted to try it, and I send out... 30 applications, and finally somebody accepted this random German. So yeah, just over a weekend, and uh, let's see how that's going to turn out. I will keep you posted 
it's going to be a lot of fails, a lot of randomness. Uh, let's see about it. But yeah, so thank you everybody for supporting me. Thanks for all the nice words, all the comments. You always challenge me a lot. I seriously appreciate that. And this has been my biggest hobby. <laughs> is it actually sad if this is my biggest hobby? Yeah, this uh, Sardor has been my biggest hobby for some time. And I will keep sharing you my progress, send questions my way, send tricks that you have my way. If they're good, I'm definitely going to incorporate them in my next videos as well because there's always something that you can improve, always something you can do better. Uh, yeah, may the gluten be with you. Thank you so much. I'm going to close the stream now. And if you have questions I didn't answer, then please drop them in one of the videos. Tschüss, bis später, bye bye, see ya. <laughs> <laughs>